Hello, Internet, and welcome to Season 2 of Ship of the Week, a series where I have just one hour to design a ship based on your viewer suggestions and hopefully make it work. Ships that do pass my completely unbiased inspection will go up on the workshop for everyone to download and enjoy, but the ships that don't make the cut, well, they get scuttled. We have a lot of great new ideas this season and a lot of new game mechanics to test out. So let's hop right on in to Ship of the Week. This week we're going to be revisiting a concept sort of idea from the first season, which was a vehicle that could drill down to deep ore deposits and was also a rover. That's the right order to say things. The thing I designed in season one was the plunge mining rover and it didn't quite work, mainly because I'm bad at math. So, for this iteration, we're going to be taking math out of the equation and using the power of drones. So what we're going to be designing is a rover that essentially carries a little drone. That drone bores down into the earth to get to all the goody resources, gathers some up, goes back up to the you know, rover mother truck, and drops it off. Now, I should note that... uh due to various technical recording difficulties from moving into a new space and setting all my recording stuff up again. I have done this before. Uh, this is the third iteration of this video. Hopefully the, my voiceover is actually in this one. That would be nice. But uh, yeah, I've done this before. I, it, it's going to work. Just please watch anyway to appease the algorithm, please. But yeah, uh, I guess without further ado, I'm going to go ahead. I have a fun new little thing. Ha ha. So uh, up in the upper left corner there, you probably noticed the timer. So that timer is going to be up there the whole time showing the time I have to do the build. Uh, never mind when it jump cuts. I'm probably coughing up a lung. So yeah, uh, here we go in three, two, one. And we're off. Okay. So first thing I need to do is get my hotbar together. All the various bits and bobs I'm going to need to, well, build from. Alright, and then we will build ourselves a little sprue to build the first part of this machine off of. And as I said, this is a drone miner. So it's going to, well have a mining drone. I'm going to design that mining drone first, mainly because having that drone will give us sort of the dimensions we need to build our rover. So I'll go fairly simple. I think that one battery ought to be enough. Let's do maybe four thrusters that way. And then I think I think I probably need to yeah, do piping next. So I'll slap one of those on, and then use the conveyor tubes for some of the rest. And what I can do, uh, yeah, I should have enough room for this. I can have some sorters, and we'll use this as the stone ejection system. So that's always good to have in a mining machine. So I've got those. Now we want to build our core going back. So if I use one of these curvy bits that are hard to see. Another pipe, another curvy bit. We can have our tube coming straight out the back. And I think the main point of this... So, we have four thrusters pointing that way. We have our four thrusters pointing that way. That's probably enough distance I can go ahead and put a connector back here so my idea with the thrust on this 
the drone is going to be stored this orientation. So drill down, connector up, in kind of the middle of the rover. That way, when I want to drill, I just position myself over ore, uh, probably that silver that is 97 meters, well, it's closer to the surface if I weren't at an angle. But position myself over the ore, release the drone, fly it down, drilling a hole, and then, yeah, I'm right on my target. The reason I have these thrusters is so that once I get down to that depth, I can mine flat with the terrain. So essentially, I will be pointing down like this, and then I will pull up and mine like this. And that's because ore in Space Engineers, while some of it's thicker than others, it's mostly sort of in flat, disc-shaped things, roughly aligned with the terrain of the planet. So a plunge miner, while you can get some ore, isn't necessarily all that useful for getting a bunch of ore, because you can't get the whole deposit easily. So with those thrusters there, what other things? Uh, so I'm going to want a remote control, and I'm actually going to have a second remote control. Then I need to adjust my sprue a bit. So then I can stick a camera on. Yeah. And a camera on in the correct orientation. That is important. So the reason to have these two remote controls, this one is sort of my forward. So I can control and dig down and all that. When I want to fly back up out of my tunnel and dock, I switch to this remote so I can see backwards. All my controls are oriented for backwards. And it means I can just fly up and dock. Hopefully. So yeah. That looks pretty good. Now, let's see. I'm going to need an antenna. I don't think I'll put an ore detector on the drone, because that's something that could go on the truck. Going to want different thrusters, because I think for the rest of this, these two sort of main lifting directions are the ones I need the heaviest power in. Everything else I should be able to do with flatmo thrusters. Because flatmos take up less space, but they are weaker. Ooh, actually, I can have these big boys for my lateral thrust, and that kind of wraps all that up into a nice little package. Let's see, do I want... Hmm. can put these here for now. I may try and pull them up a block if I decide I want to. Yeah, I think I probably will pull those up a block and greeble around them a bit. But, that should be all the directions of thrust I need. I think... Yeah, I've got a good little spot there for an antenna. can put my gyroscope in there. Oh, and I think... Along with the gyro, there is... We'll have an event controller, because I can use that for some things. And I think because I'll have the room, I'll just put some battery, little baby batteries in there. Because then I can reattach all the thrusters straight to them. Takes up the room and gives us a little bit more flight time. Yeah, that's actually... Hmm. Record time, and I think I've got a drone built. Uh, oh. Except one last important thing. So up here with the piss or with the uh, this thing, I want a merge block because just having this connector isn't particularly stable. I'm gonna want to be able to merge to the truck itself too, just you know, because I can. So yeah, uh, maybe some light greebling, and I guess we're on to the truck. Yeah, I think that's 
you know, pretty solid little mining drone. I guess we can well, do a quick test and seems to be flying. Uh, go ahead. We'll have to set all this stuff up and name things and all that, but... Whoop. Oh. Okay, well that's something to note. When empty, it can't support itself with just the four thrusters. I must have had more before. But... These other four, the four big thrusters should be good. So I think the flat mode is like a third the power of a normal thruster, maybe, for the small flat mows. I'm sure, I mean, there is a number. I don't remember it. I'm sure it'll be in the comments section now. But, yeah, the flat mows in general are less powerful. But that shouldn't be an issue because I should never be upside down or pointing straight up, hopefully. At least, you know, under normal, intentional operation. So we've got a little drone friend. Now, set up another stalk over here. And the truck is going to be fairly straightforward endeavor. So, we'll have these. Let's see, I think there we stick a medium container. Then the bulk of the truck body, uh, well, a bunch of the truck body is going to be made up of these cargo containers. So that's plenty of cargo storage. And then in between, in order to give us enough room to actually dock our little mining drone, we will have these conveyor adapter thingies and I need mini conveyors. Because from here, if I find, yeah, the straight one. So, real quick, let's measure. So our drone is one, two, three, four, five blocks tall by, we'll count this as two blocks. Even though it's sort of only one width, but I think this takes up a bit of space. So, we'll call it seven blocks wide so five by seven and if we assume that it docks where the top here is facing forward on the truck that means we need seven blocks of space from this side to this side and five blocks backwards and i am just for the sake of ease going to enable the uh mirror mode so that is M, kind of let you select your plane, and then you enable it by hitting N to turn it on. So with that, I can place twice as many blocks, saving time for this challenge. I have a T piece there, which will be important. And then those for, well, two more blocks. So now we'll stick those on stick two more of these cargo containers on so to just rebuild the thing we had up front there stick these in the middle for even more cargo capacity batteries I may actually be able to yeah I can fit three batteries in here each the more batteries on this thing, the better, because part of how this is going to work is the mining drone uses up the power in its battery going down mining, comes up and reconnects to all this, and charges up again. We can also... that was just to be able to attach correctly. But yeah, more batteries equals more better. Okay, uh, oh. Wheels are also an important step in this process. I think maybe there... I think there, there... 
there and there is correct positioning. I may be using prior gain knowledge. And then I'm going to use the big old wheels, mainly because I want this thing to be mobile. So that's another thing to note with the previous design, the plunge miner in season one. The way to make it work better would have involved making it longer to add more pistons in uh, or taller, but either way it would have made it more difficult to drive around and it was already pretty big and kind of ungainly. So I think this design is a little more compact and hopefully a little more drivable. Now we just need our stalk. And that, oh, I need to figure out where I want that to come up to because I want the end of the drill to probably be, probably be aligned with the bottom of these suspensions. That way, you know, I don't bang it on every rock I drive over. So if we take a look here, this thing is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 blocks tall. Okay. So if I go from down here, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I want the connector and merge block of the drone to be level with that block. Which means I need to have my stalk, well, I need to place on the stalk first off, but I need it to go one block higher, which would be, nope. Uh, and actually I need it to go two blocks higher. That needs to be a curvy bit. And just, just because I think it'll come in handy I'm gonna put some of these in here so now I can stick my connector right there get my piston which for some reason houses the merge block uh, let's see if this is my front I need yeah, the merge block to the front of the connector to line up correctly uh, so now, what are the last things? I'll need an ore detector and an antenna on board. Hmm. I want to put the cockpit on. So, if I want to do that and pipe it, well, I need pipes for starters. Yeah, that should work. Because then... Ooh. Do I want to try... Hmm. So the truck cockpit would be up there. It's kind of compelling, but it's way high up. could put the truck cockpit there and just not worry about piping it. You know what? What is it? I mean, it's not an incredible view from inside, but it kind of gives it a good stance, doesn't it now? My other option, the option I was sort of going for, was to use this thing which actually I think I would want to lower ooh I mean hmm. this makes more sense because you can see down you have better visibility versus the truck cockpit you're kind of It is a little further back, though. You know what? This seems more fun. We're doing that. And it's new. We didn't have it in Season 1. So we'll get rid of those. 
Uh, we'll turn off mirror mode within real quick so we can place these things. Maybe just a gyroscope in case. Yeah, and then so that we can still have it sort of piped up. We'll stick that down there. Don't think I could put a cover on, but that doesn't help. Yeah, maybe we just don't worry about piping it. We'll put some angly bits on down there to cover up the thing and make it look a little more connected to the chassis. But yeah. So that's that. Uh, oh, we need... We need a connector. I think what I'm going to do for the connector... Uh, first off, we need the thing to build the connector with. And then I'm going to rotate this up like so. Because this is only designed to carry ore, I can have my large connector there. And then just pipe it on over. So, I think I want to do... Let's do some various greebling. How long? I have half an hour left. That should be plenty of time. Probably needs a paint job, but we can do that later. And I do think... What good light options do I have to cover these up? I don't know if pokey lights are quite right. Those sort of work. Those cover the thing fully, but they're kind of silly looking. Yeah, we'll go with those just to... Cover the... You know, access ports there. Maybe... Eh, those don't quite look attached. Maybe some... Some high-up headlight things, too. But I think that is a truck. Good enough, at least. So... Oh. Though it will bother me that... I don't have that covered, considering I covered most of the others pretty well. So we've got a truck, we've got a drone. Now, I need to set this drone up for docking. Well, I guess for general. And what that is going to entail is selecting all the thrusters, which will be easier by just doing that. I'm going to give it a fairly specific group name. That way it doesn't incidentally interfere with anything else I may build or potentially try and dock. Uh, are there any other groups? Uh, probably want a group for batteries. Thrust. Uh, probably do lights. Just while I'm here, we'll go ahead and... Set those up nice. Okay, now... We're gonna go ahead and start renaming some things. So that'll be... The ejector. I uh, will Use some build vision, that makes this easier. Because for these things... I want to label them as camera... Front remote control front, and then this will be remote control rear, and camera rear. So that way I can set those up and know which one I'm looking at. Now, the reason I have this event controller, and this is something I do on a lot of my builds nowadays, this is going to be a docking controller. So we want to set it to connector connected. Uh, set it to look at the connector the, is the main docking one. And then for actions, we're going to have things like turning off and on the antenna. 
I guess I should mention. So how these work, they're very similar to a sensor where this first event, this first block, essentially, first box, triggers when the event occurs, when the event controller is triggered. So when that connector connects, this thing happens. The second box is for when the event controller is no longer being triggered. So when that connector disconnects, it is no longer connected, therefore event two will happen. And what this is gonna do is allow me to turn off and on all the things that I don't want on when I'm docked to the truck. So have our ejectors automatically turn off. We'll have the gyroscope on board turn off. Uh, you can also, so these things down here are uh, essentially the hot bar type things. So if you, in normal G menu, hit control and then one, two, three, yada, yada, you go to different hot bars. You can do the same thing on event controllers to go and essentially have nine commands triggered by one event controller. So that was lights and thrust. For batteries, we're going to, when we dock, we want it to turn on recharge. And then when none docks, I always just do enable auto, which is sort of their default state. And that, because we don't necessarily have recharge on and off, doesn't necessarily switch between the two. So doing it the, like this kind of guarantees that the battery is in the correct state so you don't just drop the drone off the bottom of the mining machine. Then, let's see, so I've got antenna, ejector one and two, got our gyro, got our lights, got our thrusters, got our batteries. Do I need anything else going off? I don't think so. Did I? Yeah, antenna was the first thing. So... You might be tempted to put the merge block in this system, like have the merge block connect when you lock. And that sort of works. The issue with that is connectors, when they lock and unlock, they aren't necessarily flush together. Whereas a merge block wants to be. So in practice, if you control the merge block this way, this merge block isn't actually in locking range with the other one. So it's just trying to lock and creates a force and it just gets awkward. So as much as it would be nice to have one button press, I find it easier to just have these as two separate things. That way you can kind of control the merge block, use it to do the actual docking, and then this is just your, basically your on off for everything. So that should be the docking controller set up. Now, the last thing I want to do is set up these. So, front remote control gets front camera. Rear remote control gets rear camera. If we go into control here, so for our front, we want our uh, sort of tool trigger group for drills. That way we can use our mouse. We are going to want uh, probably a view for the front camera, just in case we get booted out of the camera, which happens often. Then we're going to want switch lock on that, toggle on off on our merge block, and yeah, that should be everything. So now if we go into the rear one, control it, uh, we don't need our drill on here, so we can go straight to our camera, switch lock there, toggle on off there. And that should be everything we need in reverse. Okay, uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and set up our ejection system, which annoyingly you have to do individually, but... We only have the two. So we whitelist stone in both. And then our ejection things. 
you just throw out, collect all. They don't need to be used for parking or anything. That won't matter, but we'll set it like that. And... Yeah, that should be good. I believe now, the last thing to do, we will copy this and see if we can't just attach it to the merge block on here. Oh, and we can. Oh, and things haven't turned off because, well, they won't because we aren't connected. But if I switch lock, there we go. Thrusters turn off, those things turn off, lights are off. We're ready to rock. Uh, I guess. Hmm. Maybe I'll give this thing a quick paint job and then I will, I guess, be ready to do final testing. So I'll be back in a moment. All right. So, uh, well, it's blue, but I don't know. I think it works well. Sort of a blue rusty. I believe we are ready to pause the clock. Seven minutes and 37 seconds. Uh, I guess I could have a leaderboard. Uh, maybe I will. But this won't be a uh, leaderboard worthy thing until we know it works. So next up, we will do some testing and, well, uh, see if it can get some silver. Okay. So part one of our testing here, we're going to be testing the drivability of this vehicle. So we're down a sort of ravine cliff and the diner is up there. So we need to, well, get to the diner. So without further ado, we drive. Now I do know this little flat bit Yeah, that's, I mean, it did it, but I knew it would do it because I've done this before. So let's do a quick reset here and I'm going to try something new. I'm curious how well this thing will actually drive. So we're going to go up this. Now I did do some slight setting up of the wheels, but not a ton. Seems to be doing all right though so far. Uh, and actually, yeah. Ah, this thing is a beast. The benefit of these larger wheels is you have clearance. They aren't the strongest in the world, and I bet you fully loaded. Oh, and I may have spoke too soon. Can I get out of this? Maybe if I choose a different route? Maybe? Oh boy. Come on truck. You can do it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I could do this loaded. But unloaded, had no issue with that craggly junk. All right, I think I got distracted in the middle of saying that these bigger wheels are less powerful than smaller wheels, but I have enough of them to overcome that shortcoming. Whoop, and get a little air apparently. All right, so next up, we'll line up on the silver, which you can see the gold is about 38 meters below us. If I remember, the silver is like 70 once you get over it. Yeah, 72.4. So this will be a good test of depth. Go ahead and hit park. And something I forgot to show in uh, setting stuff up. So on my hotbar, I have my handbrake off and on. 
Number two here is actually control for the uh, downward facing remote control on the miner. And I have that there so that when it's docked, I can do what I just did, press it, take control of the miner, and this is how I can easily launch and whatnot. Now, once I launch the drone, obviously that isn't going to be available anymore because the drone's no longer attached. But in theory, I would only ever need to control, I'd only ever need to hit the end to that while the drone is docked onto the thing. And the drone should, at the end of each little mining adventure, redock. So, once it redocks, that becomes available, and then I, you know, have nice, easy, quick access. So, uh, I guess step two, let's see if we can drill ourselves down, unlock, oh, do the merge block, which disconnects me from that, that's annoying. I'm going to assume, yep, this is the miner. Hopefully this is the correct miner, because there's still another one over there. Yes, okay. So, uh, we're in control, unlocked, ready to drill. This is a benefit of using the, well, of being, this is a benefit of being in control of the drone, you know, directly. Because I can right click, through, I can right click drill this tunnel, which gives me a larger tunnel to work with and means I'm not filling myself up with stone. Because it's, because this thing does only have the cargo capacity of a mining drill. So it'll fill up pretty quick. But well, you can see we're making making depth with no issue. Any second now I expect to see a little pop up of silver. I guess oh there it is. Alright. Now this is not how you would do it in real life. I'm gonna right click drill my way down a bit just so I have some room. So, obviously I can drill pointing straight down, but part of the benefit of this design too, is I can level myself out and drill around sideways. So, let's fill ourselves up, uh, use the handy infomometer that, uh, I think that's build info? Build vision? No, build vision's the right clicky thing with control. Uh, build info is the thing that put that little drill bar above my hot bar. Very useful feature, though something, I don't know, I may turn off at some point if I design a mining machine that has the feature of a system to tell you when it's full. Which I have done before. But... As you can see, and I can confirm in the inventory, yep, we're now, in fact, because I don't care about wasting resources, we are now, oh, I, I am as full as I can get the drill to go. We have some in our connector, there's no stone. And as you can see, we're, well, still flying. So that is a good, good thing. Uh, now, what I need to do, I'm pretty sure this is my hole, so we'll point ourselves down, as you can see, still flying while pointed down, I need to disconnect, uh, disconnect again so that I'm not in control of the drone anymore, and then I switch to controlling remote control rear, view camera, and now we're looking up our hole. And I, it's kind of hard for you to see as a viewer, but my controls are oriented such that I'm flying forward at the moment. 
which really makes this well easier and safer than trying to reverse especially considering how uh seeing through a camera really limits the amount of you know visibility around you you have so flying in reverse with limited visibility is a little tricky now i should just be able to go straight up here till the merge block does that then i hit oh then i realize i am no longer in control of the drone uh which i don't have to do remote access to get to anymore remote control control uh and lock oh oh and that's something that i mean i don't know i wanted to do do it this way i knew this was a, a design flaw but it's whatever I do create a hole that's wider than my wheelbase, so I'm sort of falling into it. But if I go ahead and do the this, uh, hopefully this iteration is able to fix this issue. Whoop. Yeah, okay. See, so you can just kind of pull out from over it. And ideally, there's enough cargo capacity on this thing that that you could get most of a deposit from, well, one parking situation. Don't know that. I suppose you could test it, but really, given, you know, what's one hole versus two holes, I could just send another drone down from here and get it that ore deposit again if I had to, you know, leave, empty out the truck, and come back. So I think I'm going to call this vehicle a success, which means last thing to do, what do I want to name it? Hmm. Previous iterations got like Buffalo or Bulldog. It kind of has that idea, I suppose. But looking at this particular one, I think it's, I think it's Big Blue. Big Blue, uh, mining drone carrier? Manigan, that's, there we go. Uh, sure. Big Blue. All oh, right. So, time for a, you know, awkwardly, image blueprint and a upload to the steam workshop where this is now well, as the video goes up is now available well i would say that uh well as the third attempt at a first video this went off without a hitch we have a uh, successful mining transport cargo machine it has a neat little drone it deploys it's all self-contained kind of has some neat style to it uh maybe left out in the rain for too long but you know so as always feel free to leave any interesting ideas you may have for other builds in the comments section they will get added to a list of potentially things that i do consider hitting that member button if you you know are so inclined and want to pay me for the wacky work i do there are uh, no real perks except for the feeling of a uh, job well done and uh, of supporting your local small man uh, hmm, I'm not very good at these. Uh, you know, do what you're gonna do. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. I don't control you, but I do thank you. So thank you all so much for watching. Feel free to check out any of the stuff I've done. And until next week, bye-bye.